next panel discussion, and the panel before lunch, if I may say, is on the topic, transform your enterprise with smart cloud strategies. We have an esteemed panel of experts from various industries who will share their experiences and insights into leveraging cloud technologies to drive digital transformation. Let me introduce my panelists for this session. Our first panelist, Sandeep Jamdagni, head IT and IS Ashiana Housing Limited. He will discuss on how cloud strategies have been instrumental in transforming the real estate sector and enabling Ashiana Housing Limited's digital initiatives. Our second panelist, Badar Afak, VP and Head Information Technology Antara Senior Living Limited, Max Group. Badar is the Vice President and Head of Information Technology at Antana Senior Living, a part of the Max Group. He will provide insights into how cloud strategies have been implemented to enhance senior living experience and improve operational efficiencies. My third panelist for this session, Sukanta De, Director, Estella Consulting. With over 40 years of experience in developing brands, Day is an industry icon in the growth of FMCGS, fast-moving consumer goods and services in India. And our panel discussion will be moderated by Meenu Siraslivala, the, executive, edit, the ex executive editor at Cyber Media Group. With a deep understanding of technology and its impact on businesses, Meenu will guide the conversation and facilitate the engaging discussion. Can I please invite all the panelists on stage, please? During this panel discussion, we will explore aspects of smart cloud strategies, including adoption challenges, best practices, and the transformative potential of cloud technologies for enterprises. Let's begin the discussion and unravel the insights that will help organizations harness the power of cloud for their digital transformation journey. Let me invite Minu on stage. Over to you. Thank you so much. I was just getting the lapel. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for taking the time out to be with us today. And we have a great uh, distinguished guest on the panel. So uh, we all have been listening about transformation and the journey that we are on. And I think cloud is one aspect or uh, you know, point that we all talk about. I, we heard Mr. Arun from at and also talk extensively about the cloud adoption and the way you need to integrate that. So uh, our discussion primarily is going to be about how uh, organizations are accelerating their journey to transform by making cloud as a catalyst, of course, and how we have seen uh, increased usage. We have been talking about multi-cloud, poly-cloud, and how organizations are navigating through these challenges. Maybe touch upon some of the best practices. Uh, we have experts who are from the industry who have been extensively looking at some kind of cloud adoption, and to understand the security challenges and maybe integration of AI, as we have been talking so much about these tools lately. Uh, so maybe just not taking any more time and diving into the conversation, I could start with Mr. Sandeep, please. Uh, so to understand that how can organizations effectively navigate, you know, the multi-poly cloud landscape to leverage its benefits and drive business growth, uh, what would be your thoughts on the key considerations and challenges in adopting and managing multiple cloud environments? See, cloud is there from last, you can say, 10, 15 years, right? Absolutely. From the time when we start using the public email services. Mm -hmm. And it comes into the corporate about their business applications. And now, let's say from three, five years back, we say about the moving to the cloud, the cloud first. Mm -hmm. Now we are moving our strategy to the multi-cloud. We want to build up resilience not only in our data centers, but also to the cloud where we are putting our critical True. The information, our critical applications. So, Driving the cloud and driving your strategy to the multi-cloud, it's requirement of the day. Mm -hmm. And there are, again, when you move on for such things, then you have to face certain challenges. Absolutely. And there are ways to overcome the challenges as well. So when you move to the multi-cloud, the, the very basic challenge which comes into the mind, and why we move to the multi-cloud, mm -hmm. is not to be locked with a single vendor. Absolutely. Not to be locked with a single service provider. And also, to build a resilience, we don't want that if something happened with uh, our service provider or mm -hmm. our cloud service provider, if their services goes down. Because once you are on cloud, you are open to global. Absolutely. Yes. If your services are down, you don't want that your whole business come to an end. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. You want that few of the applications should be on your, you can identify or you can categorize because the critical is a non critical, which you can put on your on frame, which you can put on your, the critical on your, uh, you can say, trusted cloud partner, mm -hmm. and then you can distribute among them. Mm -hmm. So multi cloud is a requirement of the day. And with multi cloud, again, there the cost is related. Mm -hmm. So when you move to the cloud, earlier it was said that if you move to cloud, you can save your cost. But this is not the scenario. When you are moving to the cloud, there are certain costs. With every click, you have to pay something. True. With every bit or byte of data, you have to pay something to store that and to access that. And again, what happens when you are having the multiple cloud, you have to keep track of all the costs. Because every cloud operator has their own, their own, you can say, set of costs, their own set of expenses. Sure. Which, which you have to understand. And this can be, you can say, treated in a better way if you have a good solution partner with you, mm -hmm. a trusted partner who understand your requirement, who right. understand your business model, mm -hmm. and also ready to provide not only the today's requirement, but also can help you in providing the proactively what would be required. To look at your scalability perspective. Scalability yes, true. And with multi-cloud, you also need to have skill in your team. Mm -hmm. Because if you, uh, let's say for example, if your team is skilled only for the AWS, it doesn't know about the Azure, mm -hmm. then you would, you can't get the benefit of the multi-cloud. So that could be a challenge for you that yes. you can get skilling also in yeah, the right Getting the skilling, yes. keep uh, eye on a cost, getting the skill set within the team, mm -hmm. and then uh, combination of the optimizing the services. Services, okay. So these are the big challenges. So uh, Mr. Badar, if you would like to add to those challenges and uh, share your experience. Thank you. Thank you, Minu. Uh, so just to add uh, Sandeep's point, multi-cloud is the need of the hours if you will see many studies came regarding this. So approx 80 to 90% organization is on multi-cloud or hybrid model. So in India and outside also. So to, because there is no single service provider who can provide all the services. Absolutely. Yeah. Some organization is working with hybrid model, like in our organization we have uh, adopted model for the hybrid. Mm -hmm. And before COVID, uh, uh, we were on private cloud, but due to the work from home and collaboration scenario, we moved to the public cloud. And in the multi-cloud environment, as Sandeep uh, told that there are so many challenges. The major challenges come to the skill set in-house and the management of multiple uh, partners. Mm -hmm. uh, while this is scalable, this has uh, some cost efficiencies also, and sometimes cost is too high. Uh, we have to justify to the management. And then security also is a major concern. So for that multi-cloud scenario or hybrid model, you will have to implement different tools and daily monitoring is required uh, because all your data, critical data is on the cloud, accessible to all mm -hmm. uh, through internet. And uh, nowadays there are so many cyber attacks and all uh, we are getting daily information related to that. So, in fact, uh, in our organization, uh, we have two, three uh, cloud partners, depend upon the application, as I discussed earlier with you, that we are using industry-specific application. So for that, uh, in SaaS model, we have to integrate with their own cloud. Their, uh, our data is sitting on their cloud. We are using subscription-based model. So, and we are integrating our own other applications to complete the customer journey so for to open uh, uh, that channel with different APIs also, that is also sometimes are not secured. Mm -hmm. So we have to consider to getting, uh, my recommendation is to do any organization that we should have complete defined objective for uh, to go for any cloud uh, thing. Uh, and what do you, we want to achieve out of that. So the business object and obviously the, cost, the cost is a major factor now um, in non IT companies uh, there is a major challenge from the CFO and all uh, everything is cost cutting and once you will scale up then cloud cost is too high true uh, instead of the capex and opex model so traditionally we were using this all server based capex mm -hmm. model so one time investment is there and then a lesser cost of managing but now if you have a uh, certain number of users, that is fine, but to scale for the multiple locations and adding many users, so there is a cost is too high. 
Sure. So we have to achieve that uh, business objective. So Sukanta so if I could ask you to add, because uh, we have been listening about the cost implementation yeah. and uh, so, yes. Yes, so uh, I think uh, um, cloud has come a long, long way uh, since uh, the American computer scientist JSR Licklidier founded what is today known as the cloud. Mm -hmm. And the first large company to actually implement cloud way back in 1999 uh, was the salesforce.com. They were the first and the largest operator of uh, enterprise cloud system and followed quickly by, of course, uh, the famous AWS. Ooh. And over a period of time, as Sandeep as well as Mr. Badar alluded to, that uh, the cost of cloud has really gone up. Though it is a pay-as-you-go model, though it is a per-click model, the costs are really high. And uh, uh, therefore, you have to use a mixture of different types of cloud services. And hence, the mul multi-clouding is very important. And so you have to work backwards. Business, uh, depending on your specific business requirement, your team works backward and says, OK, hey, I will use this particular service for this particular cloud and this particular service for something else. Because you need to balance your costs, your security considerations, and what are the data you want to put out in the public uh, domain. Uh, but cloud as an overall, uh, overall enterprise uh, solution is probably the best because it has the largest reach. I mean, as you know, AWS operates in more and, and others also operate in more than 190 countries. And you can access these with very simple devices, including a mobile phone, you know. So uh, the, the proliferation of these services are huge. They're going to become more and more complex. And uh, there will be many SaaS tools utilized by these cloud service providers. There are many brands in the market, which ensure that your, suppose you're storing data in the cloud, and you unknowingly have duplicate data so there will be machine learning algorithms which will sift out the duplicate data, will reduce your cost. At the end of the day, any good technology gives convenience and reduction of costs. These are my initial thoughts. Yeah, so sir, you rightly have steered it into the next uh, point that I had in mind is also that we are looking at these very innovative technologies coming in. You know, how can companies harness these technologies into their cloud strategies so that there could be some cost effectiveness if we could look at that from that uh, perspective or... You know, as you rightly mentioned, you know, a lot of these technologies coming in. So, so how do we harness them? Yeah, for example, uh, so there's a solution like DeepMind by Google. Mm -hmm. So they use uh, an AI engine to improve the efficiency of the data center and the efficiency of the usage of your uh, sort of the space which you are operating in the cloud. Mm -hmm. So let's say in the early, uh, early days before you use DeepMind, you were, your cost was, let's say, for the sake of argument, say one crore of rupees. Mm -hmm. But after using DeepMind and after using, say, Amazon's Glacier Storage, et cetera, you will find that you have been able to reduce your cost by, let's say, 10%, 20%. Mm -hmm. So these are, I'm just giving you two small examples. Ooh. There are many such, depending your uh, computer scientists and your uh, experts will be able to guide you better depending on your business needs. But these are the tools you have to use continuously, keep your watch out, to keep your costs at bay, as well as to make sure your data is secure, as well as to make sure that your customer at the end of the day is service, you know, because at the end of the day, the customer is supreme. If your customer doesn't get service, it doesn't make uh, a difference if you save a little extra cost. These sure. are, my, again, my initial thoughts. So maybe moving on to the next aspect, Mr. Badar, uh, we are looking at, of course, a more distributed environment, a global environment, where your workforces are working from various locations. You know, you also have your various projects in different geographies of the country or the world. So how do, uh, you know, how can cloud technologies enable seamless collaboration and communication across these different locations and devices and some best practices that you could put your thoughts on? See, there are, uh, I think everybody is using now collaboration tool like Microsoft uh, Teams, uh, Zoom and all. That, that is uh, need of the hour and uh, nowadays, uh, all the workforce is connected with different locations and work from ho home option is also many organizations are using. So to provide access to all the application, you should have uh, proper cloud, either private or public, to that. And then you will have to take care of the security uh, to provide, because uh, if uh, people are accessing the system from their home and different location, not within the organization network, then then also you will have to provide the endpoint security like uh, 
different tools and uh, access should be given uh, with the properly with the limited access so, th so that an uh, Android device is also controlled through MDM or other solution uh, like uh, what we are using uh, for data security in our we have provided uh, given the DLP and other uh, endpoint uh, security tools installed and access has been provided only to the those devices company owned based on those yeah yes Sanjeev. I like to add to Badal yes see before COVID what scenario was that if we have to talk about the collaboration we have to talk about the let's let's say for the VC video conferencing true we initially we have to make a budget of let's say 20 30 lakhs and then we have to consider about the location which are at remote site where we doesn't have the bandwidth the link the connectivity, are, connectivity yes. is a very poor means you we cannot have the link you are just on verge of 2g is still there mm -hmm. at that time even we are faced the challenge when we launch a new project in the remote areas and then till the time project de get developed then the infrastructure also get developed so now when the covid come and everybody goes into for the mm -hmm. your meetings on the vcs you had taken the zoom you had taken the free version of microsoft teams True. and there the cost is very negligible cost absolutely so these are the few of the things which can be which are utilized in efficient way and given a, a new perspective of cloud and the you know, so the, the, the virtual meeting, the telepresence. True. So as you all have been rightly mentioning about security, you know, we always listen to that the security layer plays the most important role because your landscape has been uh, completely exposed and vulnerability is increasing with every passing second. So uh, what would be your thoughts on that? Like, you know, how do we integrate that into your, you know, cloud strategy? And of course, there is a cost involvement again. So how does it work for you at your organization? See, for our organization, what we do, we uh, when we initiated our cloud journey four years back, the, very, the initial was the thought came from the management is that people are talking about the cloud and people are saying that if you move to cloud, we will mm -hmm. be saving the cost. So then we have a, a big deliberation on that, but instead of just moving and just going a cloud first, mm -hmm. let's have a strategy, let's analyze what we are having, True. what the application we can move to the cloud and what will the impact on that. Mm -hmm. Because once you are on cloud, you are open to global. Absolutely. It's a very boom for an e-commerce site when they just uh, publish their website and they became global. But again, it can be a very, you can say, a curse to an organization where the security was not taken as a serious matter, mm -hmm. was not taken as a part of, you can say, the strategy. True. And if you move, put all your application on cloud and the, you have, you doesn't care about that, then the things would be very drastic Absolutely. for you. So we have instead of moving to the cloud first we had to let's move into the governance part about our security on the mm -hmm. first functional part what are the application we would be moving and what would the impact on the security part on that Absolutely. because we are consuming lots of PIE data of the customers mm -hmm. then the payment data and there the other and the pan card details we have to capture so with there's us a lot of critical so data the, being involved for in the your, agreement yes. part and to when you move to the cloud the very the first challenge come out is the visibility of your asset infrastructure. True. Once you have to secure your on-prem, and then there is then you can say that the open, the ocean is there, mm -hmm. where you need to have a visibility of all your assets, all your information from where it's coming and who is accessing, at what time they are accessing it. True. Because in you know, office premises, you can have a timing like say from the 9 a.m. to 5.30 people are coming Absolutely. and they're accessing, but when your things are on the global The path, monitoring cloud, is not so strict. Then yes. it's 24 by 7, it's available. You cannot say that, you, you cannot say an employee to not to log in at after 12, mm -hmm. or not to log in at early morning hours. True. Again, there may be some incident that some unauthorized person is accessing at that time. Mm -hmm. So security is a very big concern when you are moving your things on the cloud. Your categorization and classification of application and data, and your assets, which are the critical things, which are non-critical. First, move your non-critical things on the cloud, have a flavor of that. See the impact. And, and then, then yes. see the impact. And then if you are comfortable, if you have the enough security things implemented, you have a built up your strategy, and you have a partnership also with the OEMs who can support you at night. Absolutely. When at 2 p.m. the system goes down, you get an alert. At that time, you are the alone person. And if you have a, that doesn't have a partner support, then it would be a challenge. Yes, true. So, so Kanta, sir, you would like to add something to that. 
Yeah, I think uh, uh, Sandeep made a very interesting point. So there are companies, say the e-commerce sites, mm -hmm. the, uh, any e-commerce site, it could be it could be a Flipkart, Amazon, etc. So they are actually really in the total cloud domain because large number of B2C customers have to access the site to buy products or what have you. For example, Netflix. Netflix, is it a SaaS? Of course, it is a SaaS because uh, uh, that organization provides video on demand services. So again, public is involved. So if you categorize it into two categories, roughly, one category is companies like Netflix and uh, e-commerce sites, et cetera. And another, other companies are companies like Asiana Housing and this thing. These are all private companies. They're trying to manage their own business. And they obviously have a lot of data which is very secure, uh, which security is very important, as he rightly pointed out. Um, the, uh, once you are on the global site, you are open 24 by on the cloud. You are open 24 by 7. Whereas in the office premises, you are there from 9 to 5. You have larger controls, etc. So any uh, organizations such as these would obviously divide up their work into, let's say, what they want to put in the cloud and what they want to keep in their private uh, data centers. And what they want to put in the cloud also, they'll probably use a private private cloud system, a lock, complete locked-in secure system. These are my thoughts. So would you like to add something? Just to add one thing, that uh, we all are going to implement uh, various tools to, for the security. But the monitoring is most important thing. Mm -hmm. Because whatever we do after any incident happened, then only we check the logs and all. So we should keep monitoring on daily basis or uh, like 24 by 7, there should be some alert system available and team should be trained. Mm -hmm. Because in uh, most of the organization, the team is limited and they don't even aware about what is security, what kind of uh, critical data is sure. in the organization. Even within the IT team down the line, if you'll say, th that they are not aware of what uh, criticality is the customer data, the even employee team, team data. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Great. Yes, add one more thing. I mean, security, usually what happens, we, I, as an uh, IT guy, we feel that security is our whole soul, our responsibility. True. But we are the custodians of the data and the services of the mm -hmm. IT. But security responsibility is the senior management. Before uh, making any strategy or any new thing, I just require to have a full mandate from the senior management that this is, these are the vulnerabilities are there, this is the thing we have to control, and this is their responsibility. Mm -hmm. Because every yes. employee is involved, because yes. every employee is uh, exposure to the Security right. so, so the buy-in from the senior management, directors, promoters is very much required to, to build any strategy and to have, a, have it successfully implemented. There should sure. be proper policy for security. Yes. Classification of data. Absolutely. We have to have stringent policies in place. Right. So we are going to keep it very short and sweet. Uh, and we had a very, uh, yes, yes, please, sir, sorry. No, no, not at all. Uh, one uh, thing which we did not have time to cover the, perhaps the most important thing uh, set, which was actually alluded by both these gentlemen, is the fact of the skills required. With the new cloud environment, a lot of uh, internal skills of the organization, especially of the base team, is required. And uh, to conclude, I would like to say, uh, first things comes first, and the first thing is the stability and the security of the data of each organization. Thank you. Absolutely. So echoing these thoughts, uh, cloud has been a catalyst. We are looking at massive transformation because of cloud scalability and looking at this journey being accelerated. So we touched upon a few points, of course, that thought that echo is security is still a concern. Cost still continues to be a concern. Maybe some innovative technologies and AI integration into the cloud strategy could look at some optimization there. And of course, we have been talking about the skills, you know, that we do need to have the right skills, have the right, uh, you know, uh, if we, like how we say the data lake, you know, so we have to have the right human lake also to align these two. So thank you so much for your time, gentlemen, and thank you to the audience to keep up with our uh, conversation. We are there to meet over the lunch networking, and if any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you so much.